Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm just going to uh, take you through a few slides that highlight some of the voices of the, of the young people and in all our interviews. And in terms of what they say about the environment, they, they don't uh, talk about the buildings, the equipment. Um, when, when we uh, talk about the environment of, of the flexible centres, that's not what counts. It's this list of attributes um, on this slide that um, common throughout the interviews, this is what the students are saying, makes them feel connected. Um, these are the elements that make these centres special and, and, and incite them to get up um, in the morning and, and go. So the environment in these centres is, is something quite intangible um, and um, it, it's certainly not something that's particular to, um, to flexible learning centres. I'm sure that, that these can be found in mainstream schools. But um, for, for whatever reason, it probably has something to do with the size of these centres. They are largely relatively small. They are staffed by people who have uh, very strong commitments to, to young people and to young people in difficult circumstances. So there's a concentration of these, uh, these elements in the centres that we have visited. And um, some of these quotes are, are quite lengthy, so I'll let you uh, digest each one before commenting. So um, students have commented upon the fact that these centres provide uh, a flexibility that complements their lives. They focus on things you like. Okay? They go out of their way to help the young people. Um, in other words, the centres seek to serve the interests of the young people. They're flexible enough to know um, that, that there are pressures, as we heard from Lizzie's story, um, that um, there are levels of complexity in the lives of many of the young people who, who attend these centres, and that um, the centres are really there to, uh, to respond to those needs rather than to serve some lines of accountability, uh, to serve the institutional needs um, as we see in many of the mainstream schools. Supportiveness is another theme that runs throughout our data in these centres. So it's a range of things. The, the workers and teachers of these centres provide people to whom uh, the students can go when things are getting difficult, but they also provide quite practical support. Some students may be in very um, um, dire circumstances, they may need money, they may need uh, help with transport. Um, we found that uh, a couple of the centres reimburse students for train tickets and bus tickets to help them get to, to work to the centre. They have counsellors. Some centres have uh, a range of support personnel who come in to help the teachers and, and the workers. So in, in looking at this quote, um, I get a sense that sometimes young people are, are overwhelmed by their circumstances and these centres, uh, not just the teachers and workers but also the other students who go there, um, provide support when kids are just feeling that they've got no one to turn to. The core of the environment of course is, is the network of uh, relationships between staff and students, workers and students. Um, and also among the students themselves. So, 
such quotes reveal different power dynamics. Um, it's um, a change from um, a hierarchical, uh, downward authoritarian approach to working with young people um, to um, a relationship that values, respects and treats the young people um, as, as an equal. Equally important, of course, is this sense of being comfortable with your peers, to get away from the fear of bullying, of being picked on because you look different, because you perhaps come from different family circumstances, perhaps because you have to cope with all of the um, issues and challenges. It's a sense of being able to be comfortable, to come to school without being fearful, feeling comfortable enough to talk to other students and also the workers. A sense of coming to a positive environment, of not fearing immediate criticism when you walk through the gates, of being valued for what you do rather than perhaps what you look like what you wear, feeling positive about yourself. And um, finally, and this is the, the last slide that um, comments very briefly upon this, um, this theme of, of environment, but it kind of draws together all of the, uh, the previous threads. Because if you have um, people who are supportive, respectful and caring, then you have a community. And what's special about that community is that there's a sense of safety, a sense of belonging, of connectedness, and these centres have uh, processes in place that when things go wrong, there's talking rather than punishment. There are ways of resolving conflicts that are not based upon blame and punishment. <coughs> so that as, you know, as human beings, when kids get it wrong, they have a sense that it's not the end of the world, that the people who work within these centres will, um, will help them, will walk with them to solve whatever problems they may be facing. I 